Good morning and welcome to the Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is energy. Um, energy that enlivens us and energy that depletes us and how we manage our energy for our highest expression in good and also greatest contribution to the world and to each other. So um, good morning, good morning, Rosalyn. So good to have you joining us this morning and good morning to everybody else who's here with us. Uh, I think it'll be an interesting conversation when we talk about energy management. And um, before we get started, let's take a couple minutes to get present. So let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant, bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your molecules, all your electrons, uh, bringing this brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue, and now let's press our palms together and vigorously rub your hands together to feel all that sensation, the friction, the pressure, the motion, the temperature, and the tickling and tingling when you stop. And allow all those sensations to bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, uh, energy. And so, this conversation comes from an observation about several conversations that I've had with people in my life. Uh, some of those conversations were so draining, just de depleting where I, I felt exhausted afterwards and um, de-energized and um, just, just um, fa deeply fatigued. And another conversation where I felt buoyant and alive and vital and energized and, and um, up and, uh, engaged and it's i think that we we don't manage our energy um in as conscious a way as we could if we if we managed our energies more deliberately more consciously uh, perhaps we would be able to be managing our state more deliberately and more consciously. So it was interesting to me, one of these conversations was with a friend who was kind of deeply, um, I'm going to say deeply engaged with a lot of different conspiracy theory kinds of of uh, stories and and goes down all kinds of rabbit holes around these things and the the confusion that arises for me in these conversations and and the insidiousness of these kinds of conversations I think they're designed to um, promote chaos and to promote disruption and the, and the energy of chaos and disruption is that energy of, of debilitation where um, we, we get into a state of confusion. We don't know what's true and what's not true. And, and we start entertaining all these very um, nefarious sorts of possibilities. And I'm not saying that none of them are true. 
um, or that there isn't truth mixed in. In fact, that's what makes things so insidious because there is truth mixed in. And um, this is actually something like years ago, I was, I was looking at like what makes a cult a cult, you know, that there's, there's assumption A, assumption B, you get people agreeing, 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 and then it goes off to, well, assumption S, uh, all of a sudden, you've got all this agreement going. And so if all of this is true, then this must be true. And assumption S is like way off in left field, but because there's been so much truth or, or veracity along the way, we, we are inclined to continue the momentum in that direction. And I think that that's something that we're seeing so prominently in, in our culture right now where there's, there's an appeal to uh, certain things that ring very, very true. And then those, those beliefs or those thoughts or those um, ideas are linked then with other things that are dangerous. <laughs> And, and untrue and um, designed to create greater chaos and confusion. And the chaos and confusion, if we look at this just from an energetic standpoint, the chaos and confusion is draining, right? The energy of that is, is exhausting, it's depleting, it is... Um, It, it, it's taking away from our center, from our centeredness. It's taking away from our ability to focus our energy in a, a positive direction or actually in any direction really, but it's chaotic and that chaos then it, it neutralizes or goes even beyond neutralizing, but it neutralizes our effectiveness um, as human beings, it neutralizes our ability to engage with any level of clarity, and um, it undermines our experience of of alignment, of love, of connection, and and it feeds things like paranoia and separation. And so there's an insidiousness to this, this um, chaos-producing chaos sort of thought. And what I noticed after this conversation about all these different conspiracy theories, because what happens then is it's like, I don't know what's true and not what's not true, causes you to question everything, causes you to lose center, causes you to... Um, or, or at least invites you into this, this uh, rabbit hole where they're, they're, it just gets darker and darker and deeper and deeper. And um, then this other conversation that I had was more about propagating light, you know, propagating possibility, propagating, uh, looking at, uh what what the potential expression of human beings can be looking at you know it, a higher frequency really just raising the frequency of the conversation raising the frequency of consciousness and of awareness and and it just was such a profound contrast for me, these two different conversations, both with people that I care about very much, um, and and seeing that contrast and actually viscerally experiencing that contrast within myself, uh, it that to me was was a, such a strong indicator of 
the truth of something. Because I'm not just talking about feeling good, you know, just for um, for the sake of feeling good. I'm talking about interacting with different frequencies of of um, of thought. And I think, you know, maybe it's still a bit woo-woo to talk about frequencies of thought, but I think that there's a greater sensitivity to that now. I think that there's a greater um, awareness of that. And one of the things that I notice as I have a greater willingness to engage in these kinds of inquiries, like to be present to the the experience of the energy of something. Um, I noticed that we do have a choice. We have a choice where to put our attention and where we put our attention, we magnify, we amplify. And so by allowing ourselves to get into this chaotic frequency, I mean, it's one thing if you can be entertaining something and maintain your center. And, but the, the thing is that I think so many of these, these um, ideas are designed to create chaos. I, I, I tend to believe that that's true. I don't know that for fact. I'm trying that idea on, but... Um, When, when we direct our thought in, in a particular direction, um, when, we, when we focus our thought in a particular direction, uh, we are impacting our own frequency. And as we're doing that, we're impacting the frequency around us. When someone is experiencing love and gratitude, the, the energy field that they're creating is very different from someone uh, who is experiencing paranoia and fear. It's a very, very different field. Animals sense this. You can, you, you know that with dogs, if you are afraid, the dog senses it and the dog becomes more aggressive. That's, that's observable. And we have these sensitivities too. And we, we do shift frequency. You can feel it within yourself when you're happy versus when you're sad, right? These are different frequencies of energy. And when we become more conscious stewards of our own energy, when we choose where we're gonna put our attention, uh, where we choose, when we choose where we're going to focus that life energy that then sets up a broader field, I believe, or, or I am trying out the notion of uh, that that indeed our energy impacts the energies around us. And so one of these conversations, the uplifting conversation uh, that I had was very much, it was about the notion of, uh, of oneness and separation or unity and separation. And we were talking about how, in essence, truthfully, we are all literally interconnected. That like the molecules that are on the edges of my body and my being are interacting with all the molecules that are in and around the atmosphere, that are interacting with all the molecules that are in and around the atmosphere around you. And that my motion, my movement impacts that field whether it's energetic or physical, and uh, as does yours, that your breath and my breath are the same, that we're sharing molecules from the stars and from the dinosaurs, and that we are all connected in that way. And 
that was enlivening to me. It was uplifting to be able to connect in a visceral way to that notion that we are all interwoven with one another. And so this was an elevating conversation. It was a higher frequency conversation versus, you know, the, the separation and the notion of there's this machine that's running everything and, you know, what it, that has uh, nefarious intentions. And it's not to say that might not be true, but I think that there are different levels on which we can operate. And if we engage ourselves, if we immerse ourselves in those low frequency energies, then we're attracting those low frequency energies. And if we operate on the elevated frequency energies, then we attract those energies and we propagate those energies. And I, it's a choice. It's truly, truly a choice. So Rosslyn says, a theory has to be proved. It sounds like a lot of work to look for evidence to support a certain narrative. Well, you know, the truth is, I think that we all have um, confirmation bias. You know, we have these ideas and then we are already predisposed to see things through a particular filter. And um, that's our confirmation bias. So, it's the same sort of thing that happens, for instance, when you're out shopping for a car, for example, <clears throat> and you're looking for a particular type of car, and then all of a sudden you see them all on the road, and it's like, well, where did they all come from? Were they always there, or did I just never notice them before? So there's that confirmation bias, and that's looking for evidence to support a certain narrative. We look for evidence that confirms what we already believe. So um, to continue with what Rosalind says, but we do that with our own story. We constantly change our stories and beliefs. I, I wish people changed their stories and beliefs more often because um, oftentimes we will stick to our story and our belief uh, despite evidence to the contrary over and over and over and over and over again because we're always looking to confirm those beliefs. So many times we just remain entrenched in those beliefs. So um, Rosalind says, is one's focus on outside external affairs perhaps an outlet to ignore managing own internal issues? And that's a really good thing actually to be looking at, um, Rosalind, because when we're depressed, Oh, and I've seen this over and over and over with people. When people are depressed, then the world, they find all kinds of things in the world to validate that depression. You know, it's like, I, I'm feeling depressed and down and hopeless, and the world's going to hell in a handbasket. And um, here's, here's where and why and how. We can find, we can find proof to validate pretty much any perspective. And um, just because we can find proof doesn't mean it's true or doesn't mean that it is the exclusive perspective on whatever that issue or consideration might be. So um, Jenny says, ha I don't think I told you I finally bought a car in January. Well, congratulations, Jenny. And I'll bet you see a lot of those cars on the road. Um, and that's got to be a relief for you. And good morning, good morning, Robin. So good to have you here with us this morning. We're talking about energy and, and curating our energy in a deliberate way. So, you know, in this conversation that I was having this with this friend who is all over all kinds of, of um, conspiracy theory things, uh, finally, I said, you know, I choose not to put my attention there because it's it's debilitating. There's no, uh, where can it lead? What kind of positive outcome can be created by chasing things down that rabbit hole? What I noticed for me is that it drained me, that that my energy just went right in the toilet. And I noticed this sense of, chaos and confusion in my mind that really 
was disruptive. I, I could literally feel the disruption of energy in my body. And the darkness of it. Yeah, I'll just say the darkness of it, that it just was a, a way it sort of sucking me into this deep, dark, black tunnel. And you might say, well, it's denial to not entertain that. Um, I think we get to decide where to put our energy. And I consciously and deliberately choose to direct my energy toward life affirming potential, you know, to contributing to the elevating of consciousness and frequency on the on this planet. So Jenny's talking about some challenges that she's experiencing um i i encourage you to look at the energy around this for you just because that's today's topic uh so when you you experience certain news there may be there may be things that you actions that you can take the um management of our energy and of our focus is an important important thing that i think that i think we don't necessarily give enough attention to jenny we're sending you prayers that that you can find your way through this in a way that supports you and um, directing positive energy, directing the energy of potential and possibility toward that instead of the energy of hopelessness and despair. Um, I think that we do have a choice about this and it's not, it's not Pollyanna. It's a real thing that, um, the intensity of our energy impacts outcomes and um i'm not saying it's that simple and i'm not saying it's going to make everything go away uh, but it's something yeah so we can we can all support you in in um sending energy toward someone appearing that can help you an advocate um, there are probably agencies that you can talk to. Uh, there may be sort of public uh, legal agencies that might be able to help you, um, to support you. And I think we're, we're really looking at being conscious and deliberate in what I said earlier, curating our energies and our attentions. And um, so I know I know it can be challenging. I you know, I've been through lots in my life where where it was just very dark and deep and we just keep getting to put one foot in front of another and we get to make choices. We get to make choices about stepping into fear or stepping into faith and, and the faith that I'm talking about. And it's not just black and white fear or faith, but just as an example. And when I'm talking about faith, I'm talking about uh, finding ways to be able to trust the universe and finding a place in our hearts where we can um, move into the potentials and at the very least even if things even if the circumstances are super challenging and difficult at least we'll 
have a greater resourcefulness in moving through them if we're able to maintain and curate our energy. So, um, Jenny, I hear your frustration and and all we can do is is wish you, send you good energy, send you strength, send you courage, send you persistence to be able to move through this challenge. And, and perhaps you can be looking uh, into group forums, like there might be uh, groups online that deal with stuff like this that you might be able to connect to because it's unlikely that you're the only person that has encountered these issues. So um, maybe even through Facebook, there might be groups that are advocacy groups that you might be able to connect with. Um, so that those notions came out of the energy of possibility rather than saying, oh, it's a crisis and there's nothing I can do about it. And I'm not saying you're doing that. So um, so Rosalyn is saying, uh, uh, Rosalyn's responding to Jenny, just saying, work back to present day, what actions need to be in place to meet and check the boxes. So taking a strategic approach to the situation and um, consider where advocacy might be available for you. And um, yeah, so we have a lot more power than we recognize in terms of the energy that we wield and that we express in the world. And when we allow ourselves to fall into chaos, when we allow ourselves to fall into the dark, dark hole, um, we are disempowering ourselves. We're kind of unplugging that energy rather than plugging it in and focusing it and allowing it to amplify. And it's, it's a dance. It's a dance. But when you recognize that you actually have a choice of how to respond, that the circumstances don't, don't dictate how you need to be, uh, then, then whole worlds of possibility open up to you. And um, I just, I invite you to look at managing your energy first and, and move from there. Say to notice what's going on in here, to notice how you can maybe elevate that, and um, that that should be, and I use the word should, um, I recognize that, but that when we do that, we have potential to really profoundly influence our lives, and so I encourage that for all of us that we recognize our energy and how we're using it and um, be more deliberate about it. And with that, I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. And I go live here each weekday morning on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel at 9 a.m. Eastern. And I invite you to check out the other awesome programming on Enlightened World Network and Enlightened World Living. And... Um, Jenny says, yep, keep the good vibes to get good things back. It's challenging. I know it's challenging, but it makes a difference. So thank you all for being here, for engaging, um, for just showing up. And uh, until next time, so much love to you. <laughs>